Thanks very much uh, uh, for the invitation and for the introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to visit uh, Kyoto uh, for the third time. So yesterday when I arrived, uh, we had to do some uh, administrative uh, you know, things and uh, I was given a certificate that officially appoint me as a visiting professor under a certain program that, that supported the visit. So I asked Asushi what is the purpose of this program. And he said the purpose of this program is for globalization of Japanese universities. <laughs> so I hope that uh, you find the subject of this series of lectures relevant because we will be doing quite a lot of globalization. Uh, there's, there, there seems to be quite a mixed audience here with uh, experts and maybe some students. So um, at the beginning, I think I will, I will err on the side of being uh, uh, on, the, on, the side of, on the slow side, I guess. So I, I may uh, be going slower than what some of the expect, uh, experts might prefer. So, um, okay, so. As she mentioned, uh, the subject is, uh, that I'll talk about is on globalizing supercapital representations. And I'll define some of these terms as we go along. And uh, even though um, the focus is on a, a function field, which is a characteristic P bigger than zero, but in fact, many of the things that I say will work uh, for, um, even for number fields, which are characteristic zero. So at the beginning, let me uh, let me start with K uh, global view. Um, so uh, K is either a number view, for example, uh, you know, like two, or uh, it could be a, a, a function view. example, FP uh, brackets uh, that P. Okay. So of course, by a function field, we mean the function field of, uh, of an uh, um, absolutely irreducible uh, smooth projective curve. Finite view, so for example. Okay. okay. Uh, as usual, I'll let A be the, uh, the Adele ring. Okay. And uh, so let me uh, take H, a uh, connected. Group um, defined over K. So, for example, uh, for the sake of concreteness, you can take it should be GLN. So, in general, such a group is uh, will be a a, a closed subgroup of some uh, GLN for appropriate N. Um, uh, let uh, Z be the, uh, so how do I write this? I, I write, it's the center of H, but uh, which may be disconnected, so I take the identity component. So this, this thing is a, is a torus, a central torus in, in H. Okay, so okay, that, that's the basic setup. Then uh, I want to define a, uh, uh, introduce the notion of automorphic forms. Um, so what is an uh, automorphic form? Uh, it is, uh, so I will not give a precise definition, but simply I'll say that it's a function f from, uh, okay, maybe even before I say that, let me uh, say that 
having introduced this, so I can take points. So, for example, um, since uh, the Adele ring is a k-algebra, I can take the, the Adelic points of my, of my group H. Okay. So I get a locally compact group, and it will contain uh, the set of uh, k-rational points. And in fact, uh, this is uh, kind of a close subgroup. Okay. So this is a, a discrete uh, subgroup. So very much like uh, so it's, it's similar to you know, R containing uh, Z, right? okay. and uh, so I guess I have to postpone this a bit. And if you uh, take the uh, the quotient, so if you you can take H. Well, if you are in the R containing Z situation, R mod Z is uh, compact, right? So here is a, uh, uh, it's almost compact, it's not, not exactly, but if you mod away also, this uh, uh, center, central part, then, then this thing, well, it's not, still not compact, but at least it's of, uh, it's a finite uh, volume. Okay, so, uh, so that's, uh, basic setup. If you have any questions, uh, just stop me uh, and ask. Okay. All right, so now um, let me uh, remind you of the notion of automorphic forms. So what, what is this? So what, an automorphic form is simply a function on this coset space. Right. Uh, well, taking complex value. Okay. Now, uh, so of course there are some conditions that is satisfied. Let me not spell it out. Uh, satisfying, uh, you know. So the conditions would be uh, some smoothness. You know, you want your function to be continuous. In fact, more than continuous. But this is how a continuity assumption: smoothness, uh, uh, finiteness. And uh, growth, uh, you know, conditions. So, for example, you don't want sort of exponentially increasing function. You just want polynomial functions of polynomial growth. Okay. okay so, in any case, I uh, uh, I will let uh, a h. Uh, be the set of such automorphic forms. Okay, so it's a space of automorphic forms on H. Okay, now we have this uh, center, so sometimes uh, we may want to fix the central character. So I will uh, maybe just write this. So this would be those, uh, um, those F in AH such that. Um, So I'm, I'm basically fixing a, a central character. So this here is a omega is a one dimensional character uh, of Z. Okay, and, uh, and the point of this space is that uh, it has an action of H A by uh, H A X by right translation. So the, the right translation action will not destroy the left invariance under HK right? because the left and right, you know, they don't see each other. So. Okay. okay, so that's the, uh, that's the object. Now, on the other hand, um, we have the notion of uh, L2 functions. Okay, so this is another, uh, maybe another functions, okay? So you, this, this is just uh, functions which are, um, Functions which are like that, uh, and may maybe with this uh, 
central character condition. Okay, so uh, so let me just copy it. So. Okay, so here maybe instead of taking uh, this in a C cross, let me take it to be a, you can take it to be a unitary character. For example, this is the unit circle in a cross. Okay, so if you have a function with this property, then uh, when you take the absolute value uh, of this function, um, it, it will be a function on H A mod H K or Z A. Because this has absolute value one, so it, it, it ties, and, and and then it makes sense to uh, to uh, require that I'm going to denote this like that to be uh, finite. Okay, so these are L two functions on on this space, okay. and we will we will denote uh, by something like that. Um, uh, the, the space of such uh, L2 function. Okay, and, and this space, uh, again, you have an action of uh, HA also by right translation. Anyhow, you have two spaces of functions which may have nothing to do with each other. I mean, they, they are different conditions. Right? These are L2 condition, this is some smoothness and finiteness condition, which I have not specified. But, uh, but they are not so, uh, it's not as if they, are, they have nothing to do with each other. So if you try to take the uh, um, intersection, okay, you see that uh, there will be quite a number of things in there. Okay, you will be quite big in some sense. And So maybe I call this, uh, I would denote it like that. Now, inside here, there's a certain uh, uh, subspace called the space of cups forms. I mean, it's, it's somehow, uh, it's not the whole thing, but it is, uh, it is, uh, how the most important part, okay? So the, the um, so what, what is a cups form? So here. The definition. I guess you don't even have to say this. So if you have, a, have an automorphic form, you say uh, F is a cups form. If uh, the following conditions hold, so for all uh, parabolic subgroups, uh, e. okay, so parabolic subgroup would be, for example, uh, uh, you know those block upper triangular matrices in GLN. Okay. That's the Levy decomposition uh, of H. Maybe I, maybe I should say a K subgroup. A K subgroup defined over K. Then um, you, you want this uh, this integral uh, to be equal to zero for all H. Okay. So recall my notation that uh, th this thing means uh, n K mod n. Okay, and anyhow, this, 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 uh, you can think of this as a function of h, okay. and this, this, this function is called the uh, constant term. Constant term of f along, along n. Okay, so a cups form is a, is an automorphic form, uh, such that the constant terms along all possible n. Uh, equal to zero. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, you know, motivated by the usual notion of modular forms. You have modular form, you have Fourier expansion, and uh, you you say something is a cups form if the constant term of that Fourier expansion is uh, zero. 
Okay, so, so that defines this space of Tab's form. And okay, so 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 one uh, property of this space is because it is a you know it's a subspace of L two, right? So you can take the closure. Okay, so the uh, you can set L two cups uh, H to be the uh, I mean the, the, the L two closure of this this thing. This, this may not be a closed subspace. And and one one property is that uh, is that as each module, okay, so this has, this space by the way is is closed under uh, right translation by H again because the condition to be satisfied um, is specified on the on the left right. So if you right translate this function f by something on the right, it doesn't interfere with this condition. So this is a, a uh, it's a H A module, and in fact. Uh, it is a semi-simple HA module. In other words, it will decompose into a direct sum of irreducibles. So any uh, irreducible summon, any irreducible constituent uh, in here uh, will be called uh, it's, it's called a cuspidal representation. Okay, so that defines uh, what I mean by cuspidal uh, representation. And in fact, one might say that uh, uh, the global, so-called global Langlands program Uh, the goal of it is uh, maybe one aspect of it is to understand this HA module. Uh, to understand it's a, it's a very imprecise word, but understand the HA uh, module. Okay, so more precisely, uh, what does understanding mean? Uh, it means, for example, you want to classify the, the irreducible summons, right? What are all the irreducible cuspidal representations? Or what are you going to classify it by? Uh, you, so more precisely, you want to classify uh, this so-called cuspidal representations uh, in terms of uh, so-called Galois representations. Uh, maybe plus some extra data. Okay, and we'll come to this uh, later on. So at the, today, what I want to uh, discuss is, well, we have defined the space of cups forms. We say that it is a main object of interest in the global Langlands program, but a priori, um, just from this definition, right, it's not clear that such a function exists. I mean, of course, the zero function is satisfied this, but it's not a priori clear that um, there are non-zero cups forms. Okay, so yeah, okay, so 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 the the goal uh, maybe today I want to just talk about how to construct some uh, examples of cups forms. Question uh, I want to discuss is how to how to produce I mean non-zero cups forms. And and the, the uh, of course there could be many ways, okay, a theory, but but the, the particular method I'll, I'm going to discuss uh, a particular method uh, called the uh, by the name of Poncare series. Okay. And actually this is a very uh, simple minded method. I mean uh, because what, what it is, uh, is basically uh, you are averaging over, uh, uh, over a group. That's what this concurrent series is about. Okay, 
Okay, so of course you want to construct something, you have to start with some ingredients. I mean, you cannot produce something out of nothing, right? So what is the initial ingredient that goes into this method whose output is going to be a, you know, a, an automorphic form? Well, okay, so you, you start with a, you know, hopefully a non-zero function. Um, let's say a compactly supported smooth functions on uh, HA. Okay, so maybe I, I say uh, what, what this is. I mean, so you see th this space is going to be a, a restricted tensor product as, uh, so here V runs over, uh, V runs over or uh, all primes of my of my uh, global field. Okay, so all places primes of k. Okay. So for example, if you if k were just the rational number q, then this will be all the usual prime numbers together with an uh, Archimedean uh, prime. Okay, for the usual absolute value. But if uh, if a were I mean if k were the function field of a curve y over a finite field, uh, then what are these places? These places are, uh, if you wish, um, depends on how you want to think of your curve. You will say that it's a close point of my curve, if you think of the curve as a one dimension scheme. Okay. Or you might say, if you think of your curve as, uh, if you identify the curve with its k bar points, let's say, k bar being the algebraic closure, okay, then you will, you will take, take the places to be uh, Galois k bar over k orbits. On, uh, on, the, on this set of points, okay. in any case. Uh, um, okay, so, so it, it is, uh, in other words, the, 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 these functions are, are very, uh, so I, the, the point of writing this equality is to show that whatever these functions are, they are functions on some adelic group, but in fact they are built up from uh, functions on this uh, local group, so to speak, okay? Because all you have to do is you, you take for every V, you take a function on this local group, right? So this local group is either a real Lie group or a p adic uh, type Lie group. And then you, you take a tensor of these, okay, functions. And that will produce a function. So, so anyhow, such a, I want to say this ingredient is of local nature, okay? And what is this prime? This prime refers to the fact that, so, you know, so, so your f might be, you know, a, a tensor like that, okay, where, F E will live inside the, the V part of this uh, rest restricted tensor product. And, but the, the prime here refers to the fact that for all but finitely many Vs, F V is not any, uh, you, you can't choose this F V randomly for every V. Okay. So um, such that for almost all a V, uh, F V, is the characteristic function of, uh, you know, of, of, of some compact group, a, a maximum compact sub. Okay, so in any case, this, this is the, that is the, uh, the ingredient for building uh, this Poincare series. Okay. So the point is whether it is of local nature. You, you pick FV, for every V you pick a function, a tensor product, you get something like that. And since it's not zero, uh, let's assume it, it doesn't vanish at one, for example. Okay, now starting from this, you want to build uh, an automorphic form, right? Which means, uh, according to the definition, uh, you want to build a function on HA mod HK. Okay, well, this function is already a function on HA, so that's not bad, okay? But you, you would like it to be left invariant under HK, right? Okay, it's not but you force it to be by averaging over hk. Okay, so you, you define you sum over hk f because you want a function to be left invariant under hk, so you just force it to be, okay? Now, of course, whenever you, so, so it's clear that, you know, if this converges, then um, it is a function on ha mod hk. Now, uh, but what about convergence? Okay. 
well because this is a this is an infinite sum, so we have to address the question of uh, convergence. <coughs> well, in fact, the question of convergence is not so difficult. The reason is because when you sum over, so if you fix h. Um, you know, you have to sum over this gamma, you only need to sum over gamma, or, or, well, they have to be in HK, but also uh, um, they have to be in the support of F times uh, H inverse. But the point is that you know this intersection is happening inside H A, right? I mean, that these are two subsets of H A. Well, however, uh, this 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 set is discrete. We already mentioned that it's a discrete subset of H A. On the other hand, uh, this set is compact. Okay, because maybe I neglect to see that this to say that this sub C, this little C here, stands for compactly supported uh, function. So the support, whatever it is is some compact subset of HA, even after you translate it. Okay. So now you have a discrete and a compact uh, intersecting. So whatever it is, this intersection uh, is both discrete and compact, so it is finite. Okay. So which is, the point is that this, this intersection um, is finite. OK, so this means that for any given H, uh, this infinite sum is actually just a finite sum because only finitely many terms could be non-zero. So there's in fact no issue of convergence for any given H. Okay? And, and if, if you just move H a little bit, you can sum over the same finite set. Okay? So you have a smoothness if you wish. All right, so, okay, so we have a well-defined function at least. Okay. okay, so the upshot of this is a, uh, there's no convergence issues. Okay. And so PF, P for Poincaré, is a well-defined uh, function. Okay. Now, of course, you ask, but you see, there's no reason why it is non-zero. Okay. So you may ask, what about non-vanishing? Is this a non-zero function? Uh, well, uh, if you just want to produce some examples of non-zero function, you, you, you can just because you can take this f. Um, the, if you, for example, if you take f to be just a, a non-negative real value, right? So you can take f to be characteristic function of some compact set okay? uh, or compact group in, in, in H A. Then uh, each time you are summing up either one or zero, and uh, so. If you take your function to be non-vanishing at one, for example, the identity element, then then P F. Okay, so if if F uh, is a function, uh, you know, like that, then uh, uh, say uh, F one not zero, then uh, obviously P F of one is not zero. Okay, so it's not so hard to uh, to to, uh, to make it non-zero. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but but suppose you, you, you take a f which is a genuinely c value, right? I mean, then it's not clear because you might have cancellations as you sum up this thing. Okay, now and and sometimes you um, don't really want to, uh, to 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 put this because see the, the reason is because your goal in the end is not just to produce some. I mean, if your goal is to produce non-zero element in this. Uh, space or automorphic forms, okay, then maybe we have it, okay, but um, but if your goal is to understand the irreducible uh, constituents of this space of cast forms, okay, then you would like to know, so so now let's say you have a non-zero function, you look at the HA submodule generated by this function and you want to know how that decomposes, okay. Now obviously you, you would be good to produce something like that such that a function which generate an irreducible HA submodule. Okay, but at the moment, there's no representation theoretic content, you see, so it's just producing functions. Okay. 
Now, but I want to uh, discuss uh, somehow uh, maybe a less trivial way of showing non-vanishing. Which will be uh, which we will use in a moment. Uh, okay. Uh, and another question which uh, we haven't discussed is: Okay, even if this were non-zero, uh, why is it cuspidal? I mean, well, cuspidality has a condition of constant term, vanishing constant term, which we haven't checked. Okay. So these are. Uh, there is still some questions. Okay, so I want to uh, hear uh, another way of checking this uh, non-vanishing uh, as follows. Okay, so let's take uh, this f okay, as before. And um, suppose you pick a place, uh, d naught, okay, of k. Okay, you, you pick and fix it. Then uh, um, okay. now you you fix uh, f d for all v different from v naught. Okay, so I've already fixed my function everywhere except at v naught, where I still maintain some uh, freedom in picking this function. So let me um, take so at v naught, I'm going to let f v naught be the characteristic function of some. This is some k or is some open uh, relatively compact, let me just say compact uh, subset, okay. subgroup. Okay. okay, so I'm going to take my function of this one. I already fix it everywhere else and uh, at yeah, okay, uh, maybe, maybe I, I assume that f, I always assume it's not zero and one, okay. Okay, so the, and, I'm, and at v naught, I'm going to take my function to be just characteristic function of some neighborhood. Uh, maybe just say neighborhood of uh, the identity element, okay. I'll just take a, a characteristic function. Okay. Now, then I'm going to try to string this uh, neighborhood to a smaller and smaller one. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So here's a simple lemma. Okay. Uh, when this k v naught is sufficiently small, um, H k intersect. Um, support of f uh, is, is just the identity element. Hence, uh, when this when this holds, uh, p f of one, which is not zero. So because if you want to understand p f of one, where right, you take h to be one. So you're just summing f, summing over f of gamma, right? And as before, you just have to sum over things in this f, which we know is finite. Uh, but you see, uh, this finite set, okay, let's say it has three elements. Okay? Uh, the support of f is, um, you know, you pick f to be like that, right? The, the, the support of f, um, it will be of the following form. I mean, it will be k v naught cross, um, you know, uh, some compact um, uh, at, at other places. Okay. So. Um, you see, suppose you just randomly start with some k v naught, okay? You already know you're working with this intersection is a finite set, okay? Now, if you just string this component smaller, you can successively rule out uh, the, uh, you know, all the elements uh, except the identity in the end, because identity will always be in here. So 
I think uh, if you want to uh, just be more concrete, okay, imagine you, your, your group is uh, GL2, okay, your group H is GL2, you have some finitely many matrices with uh, rational entries, okay, so the entries are rational numbers, and uh, you pick a place, B0, which is a prime number, okay, and now I'm going to take a, a certain neighborhood of a identity, right, in, in, in GL2 of a QP. So I, I would say, you know, if it's worth uh, mentioning that, so, so for example, if you take K of P to be all those uh, matrices, gamma in GL and GL2, let's say, QP such that gamma is congruent to uh, identity plus I know, P to the uh, some N, okay, of a two by two, uh, six, something like that. Now, as, as capital N gets bigger, of course, this becomes a smaller and smaller uh, uh, neighborhood. Okay? Now, if you have finitely many uh, matrices, say 10 of them, in GL2 Q, um, this is identity, Th these ones are not, okay? all these others are not. Uh, that, that means that uh, there's some entry uh, which is different from, for every, every of these gamma, there's some entry which is different from the entries of the identity matrix. Okay. So y you can pick a, um, a N big enough to, to distinguish them, okay, one at a time. Okay. So you, you can do that. Okay, so that, that's... Uh, So, uh, okay, so this is one way you can uh, create, uh, show that the Poincaré series, so you can create sort of non-vanishing Poincaré series. Um, is it, it's sort of, well, you can pick your function. In other words, you can, det you can fix and pick your function fd, your input function, at all places b except one. And so you can control what you want to, because you know you want you produce an output, but you would like to have some control over what you got, besides that it's non-zero, right? So sometimes you may be forced to pick um, certain FB, okay? Uh, so you have no choice, in fact, you, you, okay? And, but as long as you still have one degree of freedom, which is at one place, you can choose anything you want, okay? You can sacrifice this one place, you know, then, then you can ensure that what you construct is non-zero. And this is often, uh, very often done um, um, in practice, uh, when one works over a number field like Q, one wants to construct some Poincaré series, and one wants to know, uh, and in fact, at, at what one usually do is, uh, we take V0 to be uh, the Archimedean place, okay, the place that we are going to sacrifice, and we are allowed to specify what function we take at all finite primes, B, and then we, at Archimedean place, we string this, uh, you know, we take a bump function and string the support. Okay, and then we can produce something uh, not zero. Okay, and because we can, we, we have good, I mean, since we can pick what the functions we are at finite primes, we sort of know what we get at finite primes. But we will lose control of what we get at Archimedean, at the Archimedean prime. Okay, I want to discuss a separate uh, uh, question, the question of hospitality. Right, because so far the discussion is about showing non-vanishing. Okay? Now, how do you uh, show that this guy is a uh, hospital? Okay, I guess it's uh, not, not immediately uh, clear. No good reason okay, why it should be hospital. Okay, but I just, so um, so the, the point is uh, what condition can you put on your input function to ensure that the output PF is hospital? Okay? So, uh, so here is one way, okay? One way which is uh, just a local uh, condition, if you wish. 
okay, so in the approach to number theory, uh, uh, using Adele's and Edel's, okay, the key uh, point of doing that is is to elucidate the local global passage, right? So that um, the many uh, results that we one proof in number theory over global fields have uh, analogs over local fields, and in fact, uh, you should understand this uh, uh, analogs over local fields first, right? Before you try to piece together the result to get something over global field. Okay, so here we we introduce the notion of Hubs forms. Okay, that's a that's a concept over global fields, right? And we ask, uh, is there an analog of this concept over uh, local fields? So there is. Um, so here's a, a definition. Okay. Um, so you suppose you let pi be a uh, uh, let's just say representation of. Uh, okay, so now we are working over a local view. Okay, then uh, we're going to say that pi is. Supercascader uh, if yeah I don't know uh, you know maybe it's a better just call it cascader by analogy with the uh, global case okay but um, anyhow if you satisfy the analogous condition so what is the analogous condition for all parabolics p equals to m n of h uh, defined over k v. And uh, okay, this is not equal. Uh, so I want to say that the constant term of this representation along n is zero. Okay. So what is the constant term? Um, um, the, the, the space v pi. So v pi is the vector space underlying the representation. Okay. Modulo the subspace. Oh, sorry for the V, let's call it W. Uh, is equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to uh, call this, uh, I'm defining this as a pi sub n. Let me make a few comments about this uh, notion of uh, supercuspidality. Okay, so one can show, and this is a, it's not trivial, but the following are e equivalent. So the following are equivalent. Um, pi is a supercuspider. I'm going to write SC for supercuspider. It's a rather long word. Um, two uh, pi is not a sub quotient uh, of any. Uh, actually, let, let me assume pi is irreducible. Any uh, representation of the form okay. in other words, pi is not cannot be obtained by a so called parabolic induction. Except that sub quotient is replaced by sub module, and uh, and then the last one is uh, um, the matrix coefficients of pi are compactly supported function. Just say on HKV uh, 
low. Uh, that's because the, you have irreducible representation, so anything in the center will act by some central character. So you may not be, you will not be completely supported in the z direction. So to say. Okay, let me uh, maybe say what what this is. So if we let pi uh, check, okay, denote the uh, the dual representation. Smooth uh, doer. In other words, it's realized on the space of linear functionals. So if I take the smooth part, whatever that means, okay. Then, then you have you have a map from pi tensor pi check to uh, base just functions on HKV. Okay, if you give me. A vector here, a vector there. I go, I'm supposed to write out a function on H, right? And what is this function? Okay, you give me an element H in your group. Um, it's going to take it to, um, let's say, pi H. Okay. What is this angle bracket? This angle bracket is the canonical pairing between pi and its dual. Okay, just this pi check is just a dual space of pi, right? So you have a canonical pairing between a vector space and its dual. Okay. So this is a, a matrix. Uh, this a function of this type is called a matrix coefficient. And so you have a map, and this map is actually a h cross h equivariant. So in general, when you take, just take two representations, you can always construct such functions, and they will be uh, smooth functions on HKV, but they will not necessarily be compactly supported. But if they are compactly supported, then this is equivalent, according to this statement, to pi being a supercuspidor. Okay, so, um, so as I said, this notion of uh, supercuspitality is just a local analog of a notion of cups forms. Okay. And from a representation theory point of view, uh, one would think that the supercuspital representations are somehow the, uh, the most fundamental parts of uh, among all irreducible representations. Why? Because, uh, you see, this is because of the statement two or three that says that to say that pi is supercuspital is to say that it cannot be obtained by induction from a smaller group. Okay. So you would think that um, those representations that could be built up from induction from smaller groups are less fundamental, or in some sense they could be understood, okay, because you have a very explicit means of constructing them. So the supercuspital are, are those which cannot be handled through this type of uh, parabolic induction. So in that sense, you think of them as the most uh, fundamental part among the irreducible representations. But so just like the global case, um, you should ask the question, do they exist? Because this is just a definition of a property of a representation. So it's not a priori clear that they exist. Okay, I move on into the ask a question. Well, okay, if uh, V were an Archimedean place, in other words, uh, KV is real number or complex number, th then they don't exist, okay? Uh, every representation is, is of this type, so to speak. But uh, when, when you have a non-Archimedean place, uh, so the answer is that they do. Uh, but it's not obviously, they, but they don't obviously do. Okay, but it's not, not but so, so I say maybe I can say no easy construction. Okay, but I'm going to, uh, yeah, but I'm, I, as far as I know, there are no uh, easy constructions. Okay. But I will show you uh, one way of constructing, okay? So one, so one way, maybe just one of the simplest way, one way is, uh, 
maybe via reduction uh, mod B. And then let me just uh, illustrate okay, by example. Suppose your group is uh, GL2. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, work in, in, over uh, QP, let's say. Okay. Uh, then, um, I mean, this contains, so, so I'm looking at GL2 GP, okay? And this contains a K GL2 GP, which is a which is actually a maximal compact subgroup. Well, uh, these are made two by two matrices whose entries are in ZP, so you can do reduction mod P. You are going to get a, a finite group of V type. This is a finite group of V type. Okay, now uh, you see the notion of supercuspitality makes sense for such a group as well. Okay, you will simply use the same definition. Okay, where instead of KV, you just pretend KV is a finite field. Okay, you look at representations and you can define the notion of supercuspital. Okay, uh, representations of this finite group of V type. So, uh, suppose you take tau a supercuspital representation of VL2 FP. Now, you can pull it back to this group. Okay. Then you get a representation of this. So this will be a finite dimensional representation. Okay. And then you can uh, set pi to be a reduction. Uh, Well, I see now. I, I should uh, let, let me uh, let me let me let me. Uh, I don't want to deal with the center, so I I look at PGL instead. Okay. Yeah, so this is K or tau. Okay, so I have tau. I can always pull back to K. Then I induce, and this thing is irreducible. Uh, supercuspidal. I mean, this, this thing is irreducible. So that, that, that's what I mean by a uh, reduction mod V construction. Okay. But you see, uh, this is uh, the ingredient of this construction is a supercuspital of uh, this finite group. So you should rightly ask, do these exist? Okay. And of course, for PGL for GL two, you can check by hand that that such things exist. Okay. But in general. I mean, for, for general, uh, let's say for, for general H, this exists uh, by uh, the work of the lean and do stick, where who, who, who give some very general constructions of representations of these kind of finite groups. Related to Lee theory, so that's what I mean by there. Somehow, is no uh, easy construction because even in this uh, construction, you ultimately rely on knowing the existence of uh, supercuspital representations, sort of, for these finite finite groups. And of course, this construction nobody says is exhaustive. I mean, so a supercuspital representation that comes from this way, uh, uh, it's called somehow a, a depth zero. Okay, so this, this, this are, these representations are of uh, depth zero. Uh, depth is like a, um, it's analogous to the notion of conductor. If you have a character, like say a Dirichlet character or something, there's a notion of conductor, which is, which give a measure of a, uh, the biggest neighborhood on which the uh, character is trivial, right? So for a represent, I mean, not possibly not one dimensional representation, the notion of conductor is uh, is 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 this depth. 
so you can, so the point is to suggest that this, uh, uh, that zero supercapacitor, they are somehow the, the, the least ramified supercapacitor representations. Five minutes to uh, just complete something, then we can take a short break. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. So I come back to the question of how do we construct cups forms, right? So, um, suppose you have supercapacitor representations at hand, then here is how you can ensure that you construct a cups forms. Okay. So, what you do is uh, you. Um, so you, you fix a, a Z naught, right? Place and uh, let chi Z naught be a supercapacitor irreducible uh, representation of H J V naught. Okay, and now you you are going to take your ingredients in the Foucault series. Okay, let this be a be a matrix coefficient. Okay, then this is compactly supported, right? So because, uh, as I mentioned over there, one of the equivalent conditions is that this thing is compactly supported. Now let me now assume the H is semi-simple, so that the sen that, that Z is trivial, okay? because I, I don't want to. Uh, otherwise, I have to add this uh, compactly supported modulo Z. So I have this. So this is what this is a valid ingredient I can use in my Poincaré series. Okay. Then. Okay, the claim is that this uh, PF will be will be a cuspital function. Okay. If, you, if your input is a matrix coefficient of a supercuspital, the output from the uh, Poincaré series construction will be a cups form. Uh, why is that? Well, um, why? Okay, so because you see, we have to compute all constant term, right? So for any parabolic, this we we can consider. Uh, I'm going to consider. Consider just as uh, I'm going to consider the linear functional. So let me call it a uh, L n. Okay. Uh, define as follows. So if you give me some, uh, let me say some element phi in here. Okay. Of course, I I will simply take it to. V uh, different from V not F v, Okay. I already fixed the function at other places. All right. So I have this function. Uh, I can look at the um, the associated Poincaré series. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write this uh, upper v naught to mean to mean this tensor here. Okay, and then I will compute its constant term. Okay, so I get a number. So this this means that basically I'm, I'm taking fixing my function, again, I'm fixing all the components outside of V0, and at V0, I'm just letting it vary. Um, mm, uh, no, okay, that's not what I want to say. I, I want to put F sub V, F sub phi here. Uh, so what, what is uh, uh, F sub phi? So F sub phi is, uh, is a matrix coefficient. So it has to, it will look something like that. I mean, I fix this. Uh, I fix this. Okay. I let phi vary, then I get all kinds of functions. So this is a linear form, and it's very easy to check that it is n uh, invariant. Okay. So. L n uh, factors to uh, this projection, factor to this projection. Okay. So uh, 
this is because I mean recall right this is the this thing modulo or such things. So all I'm claiming is that if you take vectors of this form, they will be in the kernel of this of this map. So it factors through this quotient. Now but uh, since pi is supercuspitor, pi n is zero, right? That's the defining uh, property of supercuspitor. Okay, so ln is identical to zero. Okay, so this, this is saying that when you form a Poincare series, whereby at some place v naught you are taking the matrix coefficient of a supercuspitor representation, then the Poincare series you get is a, will automatically be a cups form. All right, so uh, just so to summarize uh, what we have done in this first, first hour, if you want to produce non-zero cups forms, here is what you can do. Okay. So fix two places, V0 and V1 of your global field K. At V0, you let F V0 be the matrix coefficient of a supercuspital representation. Okay. At V1, you let F V1 be the characteristic function of some open compact neighborhood with K V1 sufficiently small, I mean, meaning I'm allowed to make it as small as I wish, okay? And at, at all other places, just uh, fix any, fix any FD. Okay, up to your choice, you, you have total freedom in choosing this. Then, okay, so then, for, all sufficiently small KV1 uh, EF. Okay, so F is just the tensor product or product of all these uh, values. Uh, is non-zero hospital. Okay, so. Um, Got some uh, cookies from Singapore, so I thought I'd share with uh, all of you. Let me see if I can open this in five minutes. <laughs> oh, it's not so hard. Uh, this is some pineapple cookies, so I, I just pass it around. Yes, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just now, uh, so let me uh, formulate the main uh, the main theorem that I will uh, talk about. Okay, in this. Okay, so we are. Um, so suppose we are given uh, the following data. So uh, K. Field. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, probably what I say will it will work over a number of field too. It's just uh, let's just focus on one instead of having to uh, because the main purpose uh, or application of this theorem that I'm going to state is uh, is the function field case. Okay, 
but I'll, I'll make these comments later on. Let me just formulate the theorem first. Um, so, Uh, let S not be a non-empty uh, finite set of uh, places A. Let H be a connected reductive group. component of its center. Um, let me let n in H be a uh, smooth connected and split a uh, K split unipotent subgroup of H. I will, I will com make some comments later on on some of this data. Sorry, it takes a long time to uh, write down uh, uh, even the statement just because all the uh, ingredients. Um, so chi is an automorphic character of uh, Na. So of course, this is not a loop. Okay, so, an, uh, so let me just say it's an automorphic character of Na. Okay, it's a character of Na that is trivial on the uh, rational points Nk. Um, given omega, uh, so this is uh, basically a central character. Places in this finite set S naught of places um, pi v naught is a, a, a irreducible supercuspical representation of H of k v naught. Okay, so I'm given this uh, data uh, such that. Um, So there's a, a condition that uh, ties in the things above. So, so certainly I want this uh, pi v naught to have central character to be equal to the given omega uh, v naught. Um, but okay. But I also want this. Uh, the space of n equivariant map from pi v naught to chi v naught to be non-zero. Okay, so this type of condition uh, is usually called. Uh, we, we we usually say that uh, pi. So we say pi v naught has. Uh, I mean, so I'm just combining these two conditions together. So it has central character. Uh, omega v naught. Well, okay. I mean, this z is not. Like Exactly the center. I mean, it's just the identity component. So, but I will, then nonetheless, call it the central character. I don't want to call it a connected central character. So, okay. And uh, so that's that's what the uh, the name and and uh, and pi v naught is n k v naught pi v naught uh, distinguished. So this distinguished condition just just means that this home, uh, you know, the space of n equivalent home from this guy to chi is not zero. Okay. Now, of course, in this, uh, so this is the given data. Uh, so in this data, of course, n could be a trivial group. Okay. If n is trivial, then of course chi is nothing. It's just a trivial character. Then then there will be no conditions here. Simply saying, the condition simply says that the central character of pi v naught is this. 
Now, also notice that in this data, right, basically everything is global, right? I mean, uh, all these groups, everything is very global. The only local things are this. Okay? And then, uh, what is the theorem? Do you assume characters are unitary? Uh, so this one. Uh, you mean this? Uh, yeah. So th this one, yeah, sure. Maybe I, maybe I should. Yeah. So let's assume it is unitary. And the other one. The other one, I think, it's automatic. Yeah. yeah. It's automatic because this quotient is uh, compact. Yeah. So I have uh, this data, and then the. Then uh, the conclusion is that there exists hospital representation pi. So any hospital representation is a, a tensor product like that, okay. such that, okay, so there are three conditions. Firstly, for all V0 in S V0, uh, or oh, maybe I, I want to call this a capital pi. Okay, the, the pi v, the v naught component is the given ones. Okay. So let's say for all v naught not in S not, um, sorry, for all v pi v um, is um, um, it, it, it's a constituent, or is this? Okay, let me say it's a. It's a submodule of. Uh, of an induced representation. Um, okay, where with uh, PV. So for example, suppose your group H was split, then uh, then this P V will just be the Borel sub. Okay. Um, and um, pi V, when you restrict this representation to the derived group, it has depth zero. Okay. So I mentioned just now at the end that this notion of depth is a uh, it's like the conductor of a character. Okay, so depth zero means uh, the ramification is very small, very minimal. Okay. Now, wh why do I restrict to the derived group? Uh, well, you see, it's because the central character is, oh, maybe I haven't said that yet, but okay. So anyhow, the, the third, third condition is uh, pi has Central character of the gamma. I mean, that's part of the given data. You see, th this given data at at at, um, at the place v, right? I mean, your central character will be omega v, and that that could be highly ramified, right? You, you, you have no control. It's part of the given data. So uh, that that is why I could not say that pi v itself has depth zero, because if the central character is highly ramified, there's no way it could be a, a depth uh, zero. Okay, but Beyond, besides that, um, it's not a problem. Okay. So, for example, you may assume H is semi-simple group. Then there's no Z. Z is trivial. There's no omega. Okay. So then, and the derived group is just itself. Okay. Then we're saying it has depth zero. Okay. So it's this, and uh, pi has. Uh, I mean, okay. Let me just say it's a. Uh, Globally distinguished by n time. Right? Okay. Yeah, so I introduced the notion of local distinguished, meaning there's an n equivariant map from pi v naught to chi v naught. 
what is globally uh, distinguished mean, i.e., the integral um, by n is not zero for some. Okay, so I guess the, the upshot is uh, you have uh, some uh, groups and characters over in the global setting. You have a finite number of supercapital in the local setting. Then you can globalize them to a cups form um, so that the global analog of those local conditions continue to hold. Okay? Now note that this map, so note, the map from pi to c taking phi to that integral. is an element of this. But in the global setting, I mean, we are not requiring that this space is not zero, but a certain um, explicitly constructed element of that space to be non-zero. Globally distinguished uh, mean it doesn't mean that this we want this space to be not zero like in the local case, but, but that specifically constructed integral to be non-zero. Okay, so uh, so that's the uh, th that that's the that's the theorem. So uh, let me just highlight a couple of special cases. Can I just confirm one question? Yes. Excuse me. So in the first part, uh, is it true that it is an isomorphism or isomorphism? I think I want isomorphism. Okay. Yeah, I want isomorphism. Isomorphism, yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, I'll make some comments. I will just talk around this statement, but let me highlight two special cases. So one, of course, is when n is trivial. I mean, that, that's possible. I mean, I, just, I was just gonna say that n need not be non-trivial, okay? But the other case, which will be, uh, um, so in the, in the applications that I will discuss, uh, maybe in the rest of the lectures, I. Uh, these are the two cases that will actually be used. Okay, one is when n is trivial. The other case is when H is a, a quasi state So it has a Borel subgroup. Uh, B uh, defined over K. Okay, and N is uh, the unipotent radical. of B, and chi is a, what is called a generic character. So this will be a, another instance of this uh, term. And but th these are the two cases that will be applied. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so what is the point of this uh, theorem? So you see the point of the theorem is not about just producing but just now at the end of the first hour, right, I end with a summary that says that if you are, uh, if you are willing to take a matrix coefficient of a supercapital, okay, and at, at one place you are willing to string the support of your test function, then you can produce non-zero cups form by Poincare series, okay? But, you see, we are not interested just in producing elements in this uh, space of automorphic forms. We want to understand the irreducible summons of it as a, representation of HA. Okay, so, but you, once you have a non-zero vector, you can of course look at the HA submodule generated by that vector. Okay. Now if you have a cups form, okay, it, it is in L2 and I said it is a semi-simple representation, right? So the HA module you generate will be some semi-simple representation. So you will break it up into direct sum of irreducibles. Okay. And you can take any one of those. Okay. And it will be it will be some tensor product like up there. Okay. Then of course you would like to know 
uh, you would like to, 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 say, uh, to ask whether you can say more precisely what the irreducible cuspital representations you obtain. For example, what can you say about this pi v? Now, so the, the purpose of this uh, theorem is to say that you have very good control of what the pi v is for every v. Okay? Because it's, so at this point I said S naught, you have some data right, that you're trying to globalize. So of course, you would like to say that it's the local data, it's just what is given. Okay? But at all other places, I mean, you cannot actually say what it is, but you can say that it is induced from a, a minimal parabolic. So for example, a Borel, if H is quadisplic. And moreover, the ramification is very little, okay, because it's depth zero. Okay, so in proving this theorem, you see, it is not possible to, okay, we, the, just to say the, the, how to construct this thing is going to be by Poincare series. Okay, however, um, to show that that Poincare series you construct is not zero, um, you see, you will not be able to use this uh, shrinking the support of the test function at one place, which was the argument used at the end of the first uh, hour. Okay. Why? Because when you take a function whose support is smaller and smaller, so basically approaching direct delta function, right? uh, then, so you know very well where it's located in space, because it's in some very small neighborhood of the identity. But then, if you take this type of test function, you basically lose total control on what the, uh, the V component of pi V, of pi is. Okay, suppose you, you, you sacrifice the place V1. This is where you string the support of the test function. Then you will not be able to say anything about pi V1. So why, why is that? This is basically a manifestation of the uncertainty principle. Right? When you take, take a function, say on the rail line, you, you let it approach direct delta. Then when you take Fourier transform, the Fourier transform is you're looking at the spectral expansion of this function then you know, the Fourier transform of direct delta is the constant function, one, right? So, so if you take a function which is uh, very localized in space, then on the spectral side, it is very spread out. You, you have, in other words, you, you don't know what you get, okay? So, so in proving this uh, theorem, it is, um, you see, you don't want to, to, to show non-vanishing by shrinking support at one place because that will, cause you total loss of control of what representation you get at that place that you're shrinking. That's the point. Okay. Anyhow, I won't discuss the proof today. I'll discuss the proof uh, next time. Let me make uh, another comment. Okay, another comment is the following. So here, um, when I talk about a uh, unipotent group, I have, I have decorated it with a number of adjectives. Okay. Now, if you have, are used to working in characteristic zero, local fields or global number fields, uh, then um, maybe all those adjectives are, are not uh, necessary because any unipotent uh, group is uh, automatically spool connected k straight. Okay. Actually, let me define what uh, I mean by k straight. Okay. So uh, let, let's erase this. Not part of the theorem. Yes, but, but if, no, I mean, this n may not be unipotent radical yes. of uh, parabolic. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, no, chi could be trivial. Ah, of course. Yeah, chi could be trivial, yes. <laughs> if n is uh, so unipotent radical of some parabolic subgroup, chi shouldn't be. Yes, because, but then that con this condition would not be satisfied, right? Oh, thank yeah, you. so it can be, you, can, you, you don't have to insist it there because it will be ruled out here. So uh, let me let me say, uh, that, you know, what is k straight a unipotent uh, group? Uh, say u over n is u k is k straight if it is a successive extension of the additive group G A I mean, over k. Uh, 
characteristic zero. In fact, if, if, as long as if k is uh, perfect, for example, if characteristic of k is zero, or uh, any uh, unipotent group is k zero. Uh, but if it is not perfect, There are there are weird unipotent groups, and in this theorem, I don't want to consider this weird unipotent group. Okay, so uh, since I um, I myself only come across these weird unipotent groups recently, uh, I thought I I just uh, take some time to 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 share them with you. Okay, so I'm I'm working with a smooth connected unipotent group. Okay, I, I'm put, I'm assuming smooth and connected. Okay, so here's an example. Excuse me, do, do you have a similar result for the number field? Yeah. So yes, yes. So so this theorem that I state would hold, I think, literally over number field as well. Okay. The um, Yes, it will hold literally uh, over number of fields. Okay, and in fact, for number of fields, you can prove this by using this shrinking support uh, argument at the at the Archimedean place. Okay, why? Because as I said earlier, when you string the support, uh, so pretty much in this shrinking uh, support, right? You you can fix your choose your test function or other place. So you can somehow arrange. Uh, you know, at the other places, so that the output will be what you want. Okay, but at this place, the, this place that you string the support, you lose total control. Okay, but if that place is, a, is an Archimedean place, so what if you lose total control? Uh, because even though you don't know what pi v zero is, but if v zero is Archimedean, then it is known by Harish Chandra or Kasserman that every irreducible representation is contained in an induce from a minimal parabolic. Right? So because of this. This theorem is, uh, um, you know, in the function field case, is more delicate because you don't have this uh, Archimedean place for you to do this shrinking support argument. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you. Yeah. I should make this remark. So it is true over number few, and it can be proved by this shrinking support. And this is usually how it is proved. Uh, um, actually, yeah. But the challenge in the function field case is that you do not have any place where you can sacrifice. Because every place is like a p-adic place. Let me do an example of uh, uh, Rosen League just to illustrate what this uh, is. Like. Okay. okay, so of course we are working with, uh, yeah, and and of course for the function view, yeah, like a few like will be the type of view we are looking at. So the, this type of view, this this type of view, uh, not perfect. Okay, they are purely inseparable extensions. And that's why I had to put all those uh, adjectives in there. Yeah, I should say that also the other remark I want to make is that if, if a unipotent group is k split, then as a variety, it is just isomorphic to affine space of some dimension. All right, so, uh, so let's see. Let's, let's, uh, let's let k be a, a non-perfect. For, for example, for example, this, this function few, your rational functions in one variable over finite few. Um, let's take a, um, okay, so let's take A. Suppose you have a, something which is not a P power. Okay. And let's consider the following uh, close ups scheme of FI2 space. Because this is a this is a unipotent group, commutative unipotent group, just a vector space of dimension two. Okay, I'm taking this sub, something defined by this equation. So all x, all pair x y that satisfy this equation. Okay, so note that this is a this is a k subgroup of uh, g a square 
Uh, why? Because if you take two points on this curve uh, and you add them, this equation still holds. Uh, this is because of the um, x1 plus x2 p is x1 p plus x2 p. Uh, in characteristic p. I mean, non-perfect field sorry, uh, of characteristic p. The same p here. Now, um, okay, so you have a one-dimensional uh, algebraic group, if you wish. Okay. Now, what is this one-dimensional algebraic group? Now, over this this view. Okay, so this is a, a purely inseparable extension of k, okay? Claim is that u is isomorphic to GA over here, okay? Uh, how, um, this is, so this is a, a y, okay, so y. Well, because if you're working over this view, uh, let me call this element b, so b is a piece root of a, okay? Then, then the equation uh, yp equals to x minus a, xp is bp xp, right? So this implies that if you bring this to the other side and using this uh, miraculous uh, binomial theorem, uh, the equation is rewritten like that, okay? So you are going to define an isomorphism by extending xy to, uh, I guess, y plus bx. So, so first, firstly, you can change your variable on the fi2 plane. Instead of using xy, you can use x and y plus bx. Right? I mean, this is a, a vertical transformation okay, of your vector space. Okay, then we are saying, okay, let's you just take one of these coordinates. Okay, then you, this equation allows you to work out the other coordinate. Okay. So, and this is a group. Uh, this is a group. This is a group isomorphism. Because uh, with addition, addition, it's clear. It's a linear map. Okay, so um, so this group is a unipotent, unipotent group because over algebraic closure, it, it is just G A. Okay, but over K, but over K U. Even isomorphic to GA as a scheme. Okay. And I'm not going to write out the proof, but the, the way you usually is proof is that, well, U is a curve, right? It's an affine curve, but um, it has a canonical, um, there's a canonical smooth projective curve associated to it. And it's canonical. Uh, Or, or compactification. So if you uh, work out what that is, okay. For example, you can just uh, uh, no no you can just take closure of this in P two or something like that, and then then you find that this smooth projective curve, which, which completes this U, it, you just it just needs one extra point at infinity, and when you compute what the residue field at that point at infinity is, you get this field. Okay. So then you see that uh, you have a point which is not k rational. I mean, it's not defined over k, but defined over this purely inseparable extension, whereas GA would not have such a thing. I mean, if your curve was GA, then this compactification is P1, right? The extra point is P1, and the point at infinity, the residue field is still k. In other words, the point at infinity is a k rational point, whereas for this U, if you compute what is, a, uh, it is a, the regular model, is there's also one extra point at infinity, but that point is not k rational, but it's k b rational. Okay, so that shows that as schemes they are not. Rational. Okay, so here is an example of a weird unipotent uh, group. Okay, uh, and as you can see, it was discovered by Rosen Lake, so it's a long time ago, probably half a century ago. Okay, and following Rosen Lake's work, uh, Teats 
did a systematic study uh, of the structure theory of unipotent groups over arbitrary few. Of course, only non-perfect ones are the interesting ones. Okay, and if you were, uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he never wrote up anything, so, um, but there are two uh, references, good references for this. So one was the paper of uh, Osterle, uh, Inventiones, 1984. In this paper, what uh, he did was he computes the Tamagawa numbers of unipotent groups. Now, if you think in terms of like number fields, you think this is a trivial problem. Tamagawa, I mean, unipotent groups have Tamagawa number one, okay? Or something like that, okay? So, and this is the case, so, but, so the interest of this paper is he computes it for even function fields, which are non-perfect, where there are lots of these weird things, okay? So, First, he needs a structure theory that tells you what are all these weird things. Okay, this was supplied by Tietz, which he wrote up. And chapter five. And, uh, and then for each of those, he computes the Tamagawa number. And um, yeah, okay, I'll let you check out, uh, see what the results are. They're quite interesting, so. Okay, the other good reference, uh, fairly recent, is the book of uh, Conrad Garber and Gopal Prasad, uh, this is their book, uh, Pseudo-Reductive Groups. Um, and in Appendix B, they discuss this uh, structure theory for unipotent groups over non-perfect fields. This so-called this weird group, the, uh, they actually have uh, has a name. I mean, so Tietz called call them. Uh, I say it in a moment. So Tietz called uh, this group uh, K. So the, the, the definition was uh, u over k is so now if uh, there is no map mechanism schemes uh, from trivial to u except constant map. So somehow in non over non-perfect view, uh, a unipotent group is going to be built out of the split ones, the k-split ones, and, and these other ones. Okay. Now, the way you should think about this is uh, this is analog. you have a notion of split torus. Split torus means it's a successive extension of GM, right? So if you, uh, anisotropic torus is if there's no morphism of groups from GM to T, right? There's, it doesn't, except for constant map, right? Then, uh, I mean, except for the trivial map. Okay, there are no group homomorphisms from GM to T. You could, of course, adopt the same definition here. That you could say that there's no group homomorphism from here to there. Well, but you know, in practice, they adopt a, um, stronger one, okay, so it's a better, uh, easier to develop the theory if you adopt this definition. Okay, now, so from this point of view, it looks like analog, anisotropic torus. And in fact, from another point of view, uh, so if k is a local view, the local function view, and uh, u is a k1, Then uh, u is k wow, even and only if uk is compact. Okay, so this
this is another sense in which it is also the analog of anisotropic torus, because for torus, the anisotropic torus over local field are precisely the ones such as EK. Here's another, uh, so let me give another example. Because again, I was uh, kind of uh, shocked to, 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 to realize this example, but it has been known for a long time. Uh, and, and it's again in the same setting, so you let, uh, let LBK, um, so, so in the same setting as, as over here. And um, now let's let G uh, be the restriction of scalars uh, of GM. Now normally, if we take a separable extension and we do this uh, restriction of scalars, we will say this is a torus, right? It's a torus. And uh, note that this, this contains GM as a uh, canonical. Right, because the, so, so the point is that for any extension few uh, R, or any, any K algebra, the, the, the point of this is, is K times the L contains R cross. Now let's let um, uh, H be uh, G mod GM. When you take points, um, well, because, uh, uh, so for example, when you take points over K, you, you, you see that uh, But you see, this this is in, in this group all elements uh, have all the I mean uh, e p or one I guess okay. all non trivial elements have all the p because uh, when you take a rational uh, function in the variable b uh, with coefficients in k when you raise that to the p power you are going to get a rational function with over the variable a. Okay. So everything, anything in L cross, when you raise to p power, it lands in k cross. And so, so all these elements will be unipotent. So in fact, this group, H, is isomorphic to GA p minus 1 over L. So in other words, this restriction of scalar is not a reductive group. I mean, it has a torus, a reductive part, and all the part, other parts are unipotent. But then again, it's not a split. This will not be a split uh, unipotent group. Over L, it is, it is split, but over K, it is in fact K1. Okay, so I think this is, uh, if that's not weird enough, this one is, I hope this is weird enough. So one, one has to be a bit careful when we want to work with unipotent uh, group. So in the theorem, I don't want to consider this group. Now, but how, how, uh, let me know that for, uh, if your unipotent group is the unipotent radical of a parabolic, then it will be case split. Uh, maybe I will close by formulating a, a corollary of the uh, theorem. So the, the use of the theorem is, is the following. So um, suppose you want to um, prove a certain result in representation theory of a local group. Then um, so there's a certain statement P that you want to prove for any irreducible representations of a group over a local field. Now, very often, uh, you can, uh, you know, if, if your representation pi is not supercapacitor, so it's contained in some induce, 
uh, parabolically induced representations, then very often you can uh, reduce that statement P to some analogous statement of the inducing data, which is on a smaller reductive proof. So by induction on dimension, you may assume, uh, you know, assume that that is already known. Okay? So that, then you are left with supercapacitor representation. Then one very standard technique for you know, proving some proper statement or property about supercapacitor is to globalize okay, and prove a certain result in a global setting and then and which would imply the desired statement uh, at a local setting. Okay, so when you do this argument, um, you globalize. Um, okay, so you prove some global statement, but, but then in order to inherit that local statement that you want, uh, you, you usually need to know that at all other places, uh, B, you already know that pi B satisfy this statement P. Okay, it's only then then you could extract this property from P naught. And that, that is why in this uh, theorem, we want to have control over all the, 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 the pi B and all other Bs. Okay? Now, but if that is the main application, so in other words, the main application of this globalization result is to prove certain local property or local statement. Then, uh, very often what you start with are simply some local data. You have some group over a local field, you have some supercapacitor representation, maybe with some properties like you know, n chi distinguished, but, but everything is over local field. There's no global field at all. Okay? So in order to apply this theorem, uh, you, you have to put yourself in the setting, right? In other words, you have to equip yourself with all this data first. Now, if you look at this data, they are, everything is uh, global here. You need a global field, you, you need reductive group over K, you need this N. So, um, maybe, uh, okay, so that's why I, I wanted to say the uh, corollary. Uh, in this corollary, you are only given totally local data. And, corollary so F. Let's say characteristic P zero. Um, so you are given. So these are the groups over F. Okay, so you have some parabolic. Okay, you are given this. So these are groups over local field. You are given uh, some. Uh, Given this chi f, I will confuse this group with their uh, f rational points or character. Okay, but uh, okay then. Uh, but I want to put a condition such that uh, chi v lies. Orbit of chi f is open. Um, maybe I will make a comment about that. So, and suppose you are given uh, chi one to chi uh, a supercapacitor representations of h f with central character. And, uh, and which are NF, chi F distinguished. We're given this data purely locally. So then the conclusion is uh, there exists uh, the following uh, global Q, K, with A places. So basically, you have to globalize uh, all of this, so you you will you will have the analogous uh, picture over K, uh, globalizing. Uh, maybe I, I call this uh, one, two, three, four. Like 
one at, at each VI. Okay. I, I will have this uh, o, a uh, omega. See, you can't really globalize chi m necessarily because, for example, if you give me a, just a local character of uh, over local Q, QP, I mean, there's no reason why it could be a local component of a global character of A mod Q. No, this is about the best you could go. go and okay, so this corollary is a. Uh, um, you know, it is a corollary of the theorem. So, but the difference is that you are only given local data. So, in order to apply the theorem, you must globalize all these guys, right? So, so suppose you come to this stage already, meaning you have globalized all these things, then you can apply the theorem, and then the theorem will tell you that um, down here that you will, there will be a cuspidal uh, uh, representation pi. Uh, Meaning, you will globalize the pi i's. You will be a central character omega. You will be globally n chi distinguished. And uh, at places different from those uh, given ones, p one to p a, it, it will be in a principal series induced from minimal parabolic and has depth zero and restricted to the right group. Okay, I think I'll stop here. Next time I will discuss the proof of the theorem and the corollary.